Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture on the topic of radiometry. So what exactly radiometry is? Radiometry is defined as the quantitative measurement of electromagnetic radiation. Like in remote sensing, we will be interested in, in measuring the amount of energy coming in towards an object or going out to a, from an object essentially. So we will be measuring from satellites what is the amount of energy that is being reflected or emitted by any object. So for us to quantify the amount of energy coming out of an object, we need to know the various principles and the various terms associated with radiometry. So radiometry essentially is quantitative measurement of EMR in various wavelengths. Before going into the concepts of radiometry, we will first revisit some basics that we learnt in our high school mathematics. One of the major important concepts to know is solid angle. So we know what a plane angle is. <coughs> a plane angle like our, when defined in like two dimensions, that is why we call it as a plane angle, is defined as the ratio of the length of the arc L divided by the radius of the circle that the arc subtends at the center. Say if you have a sun, if you have a circle and uh, if you want to measure like any angle like this, let us say this is theta, let us label it as theta. So this particular angle theta from the center point, it will subtend like one particular angle and the arc length that it subtends will have certain length. So the length divided by the radius of the circle will give us the two dimensional angle or the plane angle. <coughs> Extension of plane angle into three dimensions is what we call the solid angle. In solid angle means we are going to do our angular measurements in the three dimensional space where instead of a circle around a point, we are going to construct a sphere around a point. So this particular sphere is going to again have a radius r. So what we are going to calculate is if we take any surface area S yes, on the surface of the sphere, <coughs> what is the solid angle subtended by this surface area at the center of the sphere? See so just take analogy with the plane angle. In plane angle, we are calculating the angle subtended by the length of this arc at the center for a circle with radius r. Similarly, in three dimensional space, we are going to consider the solid angle is subtended by the area like a small surface area on the surface of the sphere at the center of the sphere. So the solid angle, it will be indicated either as omega, it, two symbols will be used basically, uh, different textbooks will use different symbols, is defined as the its area on the sphere divided by square of the radius. So as per the definition, the solid angle, any one notation you can use is given by S by R square. So essentially a solid angle is a three dimensional extension of a plane angle. In plane angle, we will be talking about circles and arcs. In solid angle, we will be talking about a sphere and the surface area of the small element that is there on the sphere which is subtending a given solid angle. In order to make it more clearer, now let us take two live examples. Uh, normally what we will do like during daytime or evening time, we will stand outside and try to observe the sun or the moon from uh, with our eyes. So when we see them, they will appear as like a disc to our eyes and that particular disc will actually subtend a solid angle in our eyes. So when we see them, we perceive all objects in three dimensions. So that particular sphere, be it like a sun or moon, it will subtend a solid angle when we look up at them. So what are we going to calculate now is, we are going to calculate what is the solid angle subtended by sun or moon uh, on our eyes when we stand on surface of earth and we observe them. Okay. So now just Look at this particular figure, assume we are standing at the point O. The point O is where the observer is standing and 
the observer is observing either the sun or the moon. It will appear as a disk to our eyes basically, we will see it as like a circle when we look up in the sky. So what we essentially want to calculate is when we look up at those celestial objects, what is the solid angle subtracted by them in our eyes. In order to know them, we need two quantities, one is the surface area of the disk that is visible to our eyes and the distance between uh, th that particular uh, celestial object be a sun or moon and our point. So if we know these two quantities, we will be able to calculate the solid angle subtended. <coughs> First let us start with the moon, like here the question asked is calculate the solid angle subtended at earth by sun and the moon. The data is given is the mean distance of moon from earth quantity is given, radius of the moon is given to us and the mean distance of the sun from earth is given, similarly the radius of sun is given. So first we will start with moon. So we know the solid angle if we call it as like <coughs> omega is given by the area of the disc divided by square of the distance, the d is the where d is the distance. So area of the disc essentially it will appear to our eyes as a circle. So we all know that area of a circle is pi r squared that is equal to pi into for moon the radius given is 1.74 into 10 power 3 kilometers. So we are squaring it divided by the d given is the distance between earth and the moon is 3.84. So this is like average distance. Uh, if you stand on like different points on earth during different times in a year this distance will change but this is the average distance uh, all throughout the year we can assume. So this distance squared. So if we calculate it we will get a value of 6.45 into 10 power of minus y stradian. The unit of solid angle is stradian whereas the unit of plane angle is radians that also we know like uh, for plane angle we call it as radians for solid angle the units are stradians. So you essentially have to uh, append your answer with the unit of SR stradian. So what essentially it means uh, moon when we look up into the sky it essentially subtends a solid angle of around 6.4 into 10 power minus 5 stradian. It is actually like a very small quantity like if you take a point and uh, uh, put a sphere around it, say you are standing, if we place a sphere around you, the total solid angle within that particular sphere is 4 pi stradians. Like just compare it with analogy of always like a circle. In circle, if we draw a circle around a point, we say the total angle within the circle is 2 pi radians. Similarly, when we consider a 3 dimensional space for a solid angle, the total solid angle within a full sphere is 4 pi stradians. So here in this case if we look at the answer that we got for moon we can see the angle is very small 6.4 into 10 power minus 5. So moon actually subtends a extremely small angle in our eyes when we see them. Now next we will calculate uh, what is the solid angle subtended by sun. Exactly the same thing, solid angle subtended by sun at earth is equal to area of sun's disk divided by distance between sun and earth whole square. So area of sun disk is again sun, we will see it as a circle when we look up at it and the distance given is 6.96 into 10 power 5 kilometers whole square <coughs> divided by the distance between sun and earth as given is 1.496 into 10 power 8 kilometers. So we are squaring it. If we calculate it we will get 6.79 into 10 power minus 5 stradians. So if we compare the results or the answers of the solid angle subtended by sun and moon you can see both of them are quite similar with moon the solid angle subtended by moon is little bit smaller that is on an average days like when the earth and sun are its average distance 
the sun will appear bigger to our eyes because it is subtending like a biggest largest solid angle it will appear bigger to our eyes. Just imagine one scenario we heard about total solar eclipses right uh, total solar eclipse are the days in which the moon will completely obscure the sun. Uh, we have seen such days like in uh, news channels they will telecast how it is happening I think in the year 2018 or 2019 it happened over like a US where many people witnessed it lot of things happen it is like a important celestial event. So, what it will happen when we look up at it uh, we would not see an object when something before it completely hides it essentially that is the idea. So, we all know what solar eclipse is solar eclipse is uh, sun is behind moon is in front the moon completely obstruct the sun that is what solar eclipse is. You look at the solid angle values given here the moon solid angle is 6.45 into 10 power minus 5 stradian sun solid angle is 6.79 into 10 power minus 5 stradian. So, sun naturally should appear larger to our eyes when we look at it. So, sun is larger moon is smaller but total solar eclipses also occur. Can you please think of a reason why please pass the video for a second and think and then you can play the video for the answer. The answer for the question is the distance that we have used here is the mean distance between earth and the sun. So, the distance between sun and earth and moon and earth will be keep on varying based on where the where those objects are where the earth sun and moon are with respect to their individual orbits each of them have their own orbits. Sometimes some uh, earth goes closer to the sun in its orbit sometimes moon comes closer to the earth during its orbit. So, this distance that we have used is uh, not constant it will vary with season or different days. During total solar eclipses the moon comes very closer to us. So, the d square term in the denominator will go down and the solid angle will increase. So, that is because as the distance changes the radius of the moon is going to remain the same the moon disk or the solar disk area is going to remain the same that is not going to change. But as the distance changes with different days moon will appear bigger to our eyes on certain days like full moon super moon and all we, we are seeing right. So, those days moon will come closer to us moon will appear much bigger actually. So, on those days what will happen moon will subtend a larger solid angle than sun that is why moon is able to obscure sun during total solar eclipses. So, solid angle is essentially what uh, how much area an object covers in our vision when we look at it simply put. So, larger the solid angle larger the area an object will cover in our vision when we see if it is very small it will subtend a very small solid angle. So, as the object is growing bigger and bigger or as the object comes nearer to us it will appear larger to our eyes naturally and hence it will subtend a larger solid angle that is the concept how much area an object covers in our vision that is all. Now, we have seen the basics about plane angle and solid angle have solved a problem also. Now, we are going to get into the radiometry terms and its definitions. So, what are this radiometric terms or radiation quantities? Uh, in the earlier lectures I was repeatedly mentioning energy, radiation, radian flux, radian flux density all these terms. Those terms may appear similar when we hear them for the first time, but the way in which they are defined the way, the way in which they are measured actually is very different. So, in this particular lecture we are going to talk in detail about the different quantification of this energy measurement. The first and basic quantity in energy measurement is energy itself. So, what energy is? Energy is the ability of ability to do some work say uh, I am going to push some heavy object and move it that means I am spending some energy from my body I am transferring it through my hands to the object and I am moving it. So, energy is the capacity to do work. Similarly, for radiation also what is coming from the sun or what is emitted by earth the radiation also has energy. So, the basic term is energy. 
So, unit of energy we all know joule. So, that is the basic quantity say whatever be the object, uh, whatever be the time frame, what is the total energy content within it we can like define or calculate use, using some extent. Now, let us say rather than energy we need to know what is the amount of energy coming in per unit time that is uh, I have some like uh, what to say I have lit up a stove I am keeping a, a pot of water filled over it. So, what I want to calculate what is the amount of heat energy being transferred from the stove to the pot of water I kept on top of it. If I switch on the gas stove leave it for so much time and measure everything together I would have calculated the total energy content ok the heat energy supplied is this much. On the other hand if I want to calculate the energy per unit time. So, what I should do I should measure the total energy transfer from the stove to the pot of water somehow I should measure it. Simultaneously I should measure the time taken for this heat transfer say the water was cool and then I stopped the process when it started boiling say it took some 10 minutes let us assume. So, what is the total amount of energy transfer I should calculate it and divide it by 10 minutes in order for me to calculate the what is the amount of energy transferred per unit time that is every second what is the amount of unit trans energy transfer and that particular uh, term that is energy per unit time we call it as radiant flux. So, what is the amount of radiant energy per unit time? If you look at this with respect to like uh, energy and power, power is equal to energy by time. These are all definitions we have learnt in, in uh, school physics. So, essentially radian flux is nothing but the power of the radiation. That is what is the amount of energy per unit time. So, for energy the unit is joule, for power that is radian flux the unit is joule per second or watt on the other hand. So, joule per second is defined as 1 watt that is what is the amount of energy spent per unit time. So, the symbol to denote is a capital letter phi ok. So, phi can be like uh, written as like a small letter like this or like a capital letter a Greek letter. So, here we are using a capital letter this is the conventional symbol used to indicate radian flux. Now, what have we done? We have calculated the amount per unit time. Now, my interest is let us go back to the uh, example of stove and water pot. Rather than calculating in addition sorry in addition to calculating the energy per unit time, I also want to calculate what is the amount of energy per unit time per unit area of pot that is let us assume the pot is like uh, quite big say it occupies an area of say like uh, it has a radius of around like say 2 meters very big pot let us imagine a very huge pot as if I am going to cook for like a big uh, function huge pot let us imagine a 2 meter radius of pot. It is it will have like a certain area we all know that it will it will cover like a huge area. Per unit area of the surface of the pot what is the energy I spent per unit time how I will calculate it I will first measure the total energy content I supply I will measure the total time taken for it then I will also measure the area of the bottom of the vessel then I will divide the total energy by time and also by area. So, here I will be getting the energy I spent per unit time per unit area. This quantity we call radian flux density that is what is the amount of energy per unit time per unit area. So, the units for this is joule per second per meter square or watt per meter square. So, conventionally we will write it as watt per meter square. In remote sensing terms 
we will be interested normally in remote sensing of earth surfaces what we will do? We will be having lot of objects on the earth surface and that particular object will receive energy from the sun. Similarly, that particular object will uh, emit energy on its own or reflect energy from the sun that we know. So, for remote sensing purposes in this radiometric term the exact definition of uh, radian flux density is something like this. Let us say we have a small area here on a flat horizontal surface, a flat horizontal surface, the area is A. So, I am going to construct an hemisphere surrounding it. So, this hemisphere is like this is like land, so there is like no full sphere. If I stand here, I will be able to see only a hemisphere around me, right? So, I will construct a hemisphere around it. So, what is the energy falling on it, falling on this particular object from within the entire hemisphere? So, I will say I am going to use the symbol of E, E is equal to the energy coming in. So, energy I am going to represent it by, uh, this is like yeah, radian flux sorry, this is not energy, this is radian flux that is uh, per unit time, I am going to divide it by the area A. So, the definition of radian flux density is if we have a small elemental area on a flat horizontal surface and construct an hemisphere surrounding it, whatever the energy falling on that particular area from the entire hemisphere per unit time, we call it as radiant flux density. So, radian flux density means amount of energy per unit time, per unit area and the units we use it for this is watts per meter square. Now, there are two terms involved. One is here in this particular slide itself, I have written two terms. One is irradiance and another term is emittance. What is the difference between irradiance and emittance? Definition wise, they are the same but the direction in which they are moving will define whether it is irradiance or emittance. If the object A is receiving energy from space or receiving energy from some other source, we call it as irradiance on object A or other hand we will also write it as irradiance received by object A. Uh, on the contrary, if A is an object that is emitting energy, now again a flat horizontal surface and here the object A is there with a defined area, I am again going to construct a hemisphere around it. Now this object is emitting energy into this hemisphere surrounding it. So I am measuring the energy emitted by it in the entire hemisphere, I am calculating the time taken for it, I have to know the surface area of this. This is what I call it as emittance what is the energy emitted. So, the symbol we use is m, m is defined by again the phi but here this is now this is emitted divided by the surface area of the object. So, whether any surface is receiving energy or whether a surface is emitting energy we call it as irradiance or emittance. But technically both of these irradiance and emittance we should call as radiant flux density that is the correct technical term that is radiant flux density. But based on the direction whether it is coming towards an object or whether going out of an object we will classify it as irradiance or emittance. So, here please note we have considered a flat horizontal surface and the energy we have taken is in the entire hemisphere surrounding it. So, essentially we are talking about like a 2 pi solid angle surrounding a given object. Say if I stand here the solid angle surrounding me is like I can put, put a full hemisphere covering myself. So, the solid angle around me is 2 pi stradians. So, what is the energy falling on me from the other sources within this 2 pi radians is what is radian flux density. Now, we go back 
to the previous slide to look at the next most important term. The next most important term I want all of you to like uh, pay attention to is what is called radians. So, what exactly radians is we will move to uh, further slides, yes. So, this particular slide will tell us what radians is. So, here let us say uh, someone is uh, standing here like let us go back to our example of uh, the sun and an observer problem that we already solved to calculate the solid angle, okay. Sun is here an observer is standing here. The observer is looking at the sun. As I already said, the sun is going to subtend a solid angle. So, this is solid angle omega. So, whatever the energy coming in from the sun is actually coming within this particular solid angle because the observer is uh, looking at the sun and the sun subtends the solid angle of this and whatever the energy the observer receives is actually uh, coming within this entire solid angle. Similarly, say if you are flying on an aeroplane, say there is an aeroplane and an observer is like we have got a window seat, someone is sitting on a window seat and trying to see whatever is there on the surface. So, what we will see, we will be able to see something like kind of like a cone and whatever uh, solid angle we can see we will be receiving all the energy coming within it and our eyes can see it. Same concept is what radiance is to a satellite or in remote sensing parlance. In remote sensing parlance say a satellite will have a sensor. So, there we will take from the example of a sensor. Let us say a sensor is placed here. It is seeing something on the earth surface. The sensor is kind of like a small element like our human eyes it is like a small element. So, when it sees the earth surface based on uh, based on its sensors uh, orientation and properties it will have a small solid angle subtended within it. So, whatever the area is covered within the solid angle it will observe. So, whatever the energy coming in within that particular solid angle will reach the sensor. So, essentially the energy within that particular solid angle, what is the energy coming in that particular direction is what we are interested upon and conceptually this is what is known as radians. So, now we will go to the exact definition of a radians, what radians is. We again like take like a small area on a flat horizontal surface, okay. This is like an area, the area of the surface is A. I am placing a sensor or something here or let us assume there is a observer here standing on a uh, some energy source is there, something is there measuring it. So, now we are looking at at an angle of theta from the surface angle. So, now the direction is like uh, not in like perpendicular to the surface, it is the direction in which we are looking is having a angle of theta with respect to the surface normal. So, if this is the case, if I want to calculate what is the amount of energy that is going out from this particular area in this particular direction of theta at a given solid angle, uh, the given solid angle omega or phi whatever we can call is what is known as radians. So, radians is essentially what is the amount of energy that is uh, sorry amount of radian flux radian flux going on per unit solid angle divided by the projected area of the surface. So, what the projected area of the surface means the area is now if I am like if I am looking at some other direction inclined angle of theta the area will not appear like A, but it will be projected it will have an angle of A cos theta that is the area will appear different. What essentially I am doing is I am trying to project this area perpendicular to the direction of motion of radiation. So, I am projecting this particular area in a direction perpendicular to the 
motion of radiation and what is now this projected area is. Say we have learnt like uh, projections and how surfaces will change when we look from different perspectives like uh, as some engineering students will be there taking this course and uh, you would have learnt about like projections how the area will change. Like very similar example like if, if, if we take like kind of like a cir large circular object on the ground, if you are like flying in an aeroplane, if you see it from like different directions with different viewing angles, the same circle may appear as an ellipse, may appear like a smaller circle, elongated ellipse and so on, its shape will be keep on changing. So essentially the area that you are seeing is projected in that particular plane, same concept, whatever the area is there on the flat horizontal surface you are actually projecting it as if it as if in a direction perpendicular to the direction in which you are seeing it. So radiance is nothing but uh, the radiant flux divided by what is the total solid angle divided by the projected area and where the area is projected in a direction perpendicular to the look angle. So now we go back to the slides where I uh, given the various definitions. So here, so I just left this term I, uh, we need not concentrate much on it. So this is given as L, radiance is denoted as symbol L is given as D phi that is radian flux, uh, that is what, that is energy per unit time divided by what is the total solid angle within which it is going divided by what is the projected area dA cos theta. This is what is known as radiance. Just to give one more example, I go back to our uh, earth and the sun problem. In the earth and the sun problem, whatever the energy coming in from the sun comes within this particular solid angle. Say we calculated it as roughly uh, 6.75 to 10 power minus 5 stradian. So whatever the energy coming in from the sun is going to come from this particular uh, radian only, this particular solid angle only and solid angle. So if I am like if my vision is uh, perfectly perpendicular to the direction of uh, motion of sun, so what is going to happen? What is the area of sun that is look, I am looking at my eyes and what is the energy coming within this particular solid angle? Is what is what defined as the radiance. So radiance is nothing but the energy or the radiation within one particular direction simply put. If I look in this particular direction in a given solid angle what is the energy going out or coming in. So it, ba it varies based on direction. So just to summarize what we have learnt in this particular lecture, in this particular lecture we have learnt about plane angle and solid angle. We have also learned about certain radiometric quantities that is we define what energy is, then we define what radian flux is that is energy per unit time, then we define what radian flux density is energy per unit time per unit area, then we also define what radiance is. So radiance is defined as the radiant flux. Uh, per unit solid angle per unit projected area. So radiance is highly directional. Maybe in the next class we will go little bit deeper into this concepts and look more into it in order to understand it better. Thank you very much.